All right, we're still in th section three two with um, box plots and quartiles. Um, let's mat. Let's see how box plots make um, some of those distribution shapes we saw before. Um, so this first example makes a bell shape if it were a histogram. And so the way it works is the side, these are tails, long tails, and then when things are close together, they make peaks in box plots. Because um, it's like more data kind of smushed together. And then we see tails on the side. So the closer things together, um, they, make, um, they make higher peaks. So the second one also is bell-shaped, but um, less spread out. So you can kind of see how it, the middle is still closer together, but it's a smaller peak. So these are both bell-shaped, but a little bit different. Right, you see the nice symmetry on the box plot. The tails have the same length. You'll see in the next one, the left side has a longer tail, and so it's gonna make a left skewed. So I think skewedness is really easy to see on box plots because one tail will be longer. So this one would be left skewed. And then the last one's really tricky. It looks kind of bell-shaped, but you'll notice these are all the exact same size. And so that means equally likely, which means uniform. So in the bell-shaped ones, the tails were actually longer than the middle. That's what makes the tails. So um, we'll, as we do examples, we'll try to guess the shape. But this is a little preview of shapes we might see. So we are going to make one more box plot. Um, to save some time, let's find the five number summary on the calculator. So if you don't have your calculator out, maybe go find it. Um, but we're going to look at the National UFO Reporting Center collects data on UFO sightings. Um, they had 491 reports, um, but we're going to just do a random sample of 18. So we only have 18 data values. Um, the durations of sightings have been rounded to the nearest minute, so 25 seconds um, would be rounded down to zero. So that's why there's a couple zeros. So in case we don't remember how to use the calculator, we're going to do that one var stat again, which you could reference another video if you need to review that. Um, but otherwise, Follow along with me, you're gonna hit stat, and you'll go to our favorite menu, edit. And it'll bring you to the list. So I already have all the data in L1, so go ahead and type the data and then come back to the video. Um, if you have any data in here, go to the top and hit clear, enter. I don't wanna clear mine right now, but that's how you can get rid of old data. If it's blank, just start typing. Type numbers, enter, number, enter. Cool. And so once you're ready, we're going to go ahead and hit stat again. There is a video just on the calculator if you need more detail. And you're going to go over to calculate, calc for calculate. And it was one bar stat. And then L1. So you're going to hit second L1. L1 was hidden down here at the one. Um, not all the calculators do parentheses, so only type parentheses if yours has parentheses. And you get a bunch of information. If you hit the down arrow, you'll see the min, Q1, median, Q3, and max. And that's it. The calculator did all the work for us. Um, occasionally, um, remember how I said in the previous video, we approximate when it's not a whole number? So these, when the location's not a whole number, it's considered an approximation. And sometimes the calculator does that approximation a little bit differently. Um, so if your numbers are slightly different by hand, don't freak out because they're approximations. So they should be close, but they might approximate it a little bit differently. And so that's just our five number summary. Pretty easy with the calculator, a lot faster, saves us a lot of time. So let's go ahead and make a box plot. Um, oops, we don't need that anymore. We're gonna um, see if we need any of those fences. So we're gonna find the IQR first, which is Q3 minus Q1. So 
So my box is 16 wide. And then we're gonna, do we need those fences? So um, lower fence, we are on the left side, so we'll do Q1 minus one and a half times IQR. So in this case, it would be two minus one and a half times 16. And then the upper fence, I don't know why I need, I'd wanna do a different color. Upper, we're gonna start with 18. We're on the right side and we add because we're on the right side. We're getting bigger. So we're gonna do 18 plus one and a half times 16. And then just type everything at once. We're using these nice calculators to make our life easier. So we get negative 22 and we get 42. So anything less than negative 22 is an outlier or bigger than 42 is an outlier. These are our cutoffs. So let's look at the list. Um, there's no negative numbers, so we end up not needing this one. So not needed. There's definitely a couple numbers beyond 42, right? So I'm gonna circle anything beyond 42. Um, 120, 60, yeah, that's it. And then what's our next largest number? So I'm looking for the largest number that's within 42, so less than 42. So 35 is my max in the fence. It's not my max, 120 is still the max, but it's the max in the fence. So let's go ahead and make a box plot. So we're gonna go ahead and label the number line on the bottom. I think again, I have 20 boxes. Um, and I need to make room for 120. So we're gonna do, again, that the scale is the largest number over the boxes, which is 20. If I were doing binder paper right, just give yourself around 10 to 20 boxes so it's nice and spaced out. And we get six. Um, so since we already did um, 60s, it's easy to count by sixes. It's the same thing without the zeros. So go ahead and label that and then we will make the box plot. And if 120 didn't fit, that means maybe you chose the wrong scale. UFO sighting length. Cool. So I'm gonna mark the fence. So we decided we didn't need that one. We're gonna mark 42. That's like my cutoff for outliers. And you'll notice the fence is pretty far over and that's probably because my outliers are so far away. So I'm gonna mark my outliers, which were 60 and 120. Because they're past the fence. And then we're gonna mark the five number summary. So we'll mark zero. We'll mark two, which is really, really close to zero. 6.5, 18. And then I'm not gonna go to 120. What am I going to? I'm gonna go to 35 for my max. And then the middle three make a box. I like to just mark it like that. So the middle three are the box, the middle is the box, and the outside is the tail. And that's my box plot. So middle three numbers make a box, and we have a tail on the left and a tail on the right. And then if there's any outliers, they're just marked with stars. So let's guess the shape. So shape of the distribution, that's like symmetric, left skewed, right skewed, um, bell shaped. To me, the right side looks very, very long compared to the left side. So this is probably right skewed, maybe even severely right skewed. And then what does the shape tell us? So 
just like everyday life. What does this mean, right? Right skewed is kind of confusing in everyday language. So right skewed in everyday life tells us that most of the sightings are really short um, and long sightings are less likely. So short sightings are common, are more common. And then long sightings rarely happen, right? They happen, but not often. All right, this section just has one final example, so let's just jump into it. Um, so before we do that, the whiskers or the tails, right, extend to the smallest and largest. Um, smallest, what did I want right there? Smallest and largest data values within the fence. So that's why we didn't go to 120 last time. It has to be inside the fences. Fences are like walls, you can't go past them. And then when location's not a whole number, the calculator just estimates, so they might vary a little. I already mentioned that. Um, so let's just look at a final example. Um, this box plot's already made for us, now let's see if we can interpret it. So a church surveyed a random sample of 26 members and asked them how many miles they traveled to service, and we made this box plot. So we're gonna estimate the five number summary. So I'm gonna guess zero, right? Maybe someone is zero miles away for the men. They could live across the street. Um, Q1 would be where the box starts. Looks like maybe six. Median is the middle of the box. Looks like maybe nine, right? It is estimating, so we might feel a little differently about these numbers. Q3, maybe 13, end of the box. And then the max is still the max max, so we're gonna go all the way out at 35. So the max is the total max. Um, this just marks the max within the fence. So now let's learn how to interpret these box plots. So what percent of church members travel more than six miles? So how the heck would we figure this out? Um, this is why we like box plots. Um, box plots divide everything into 25s. So each little piece is 25%. And then all that is 25%. So this is what makes, this is like the feature of box plots and why people like them. So from the min to Q1 is 25%. From Q1 to median is 25%. From median to Q3, this is 25% of the data and then 25% of the data. So this just means this one's more spread out and this one's more concentrated. The same number of data values are in each of these spaces. So this is like the specialty of box plots. So what percent tra travel more than six miles? So I would label each of these 25s. Here's six and then more than six would be these three. So I would add those up and we would get 75% travel more and six miles. So we can only answer this for these five numbers, but with the box plot. But this is a really special feature about box plots. So label it 25, 25, 25, 25. All right, and then two more questions. What shape do we think this one has? I think this one looks right skewed again to me because the right side's a little longer. And so it tells me that most people live pretty close to church, right? Most people live close. And then it tells me the outliers are these guys, these two people. Um, and these are people who travel far to go to church, right? They're traveling 25 and 35 miles. Um, so two people who travel far for church. So either they really like this church or maybe they moved and still wanna go there. Who knows, right? But they're traveling farther than everyone else. Cool, and that is the end of box plots. So let me know if you have any questions.